Hey everybody. Today I'm going to continue my exploration into the new features inside of Isotope Ozone 7. And in particular, this video is going to be on the new IRC4 mode inside of the Maximizer. The Maximizer is the limiter inside of Ozone, and it's definitely been the de facto industry standard for software mastering in the past few years. I've been using it on all of my masters for since I can remember, and they've just come out with a shiny new mode. Now, IRC stands for Intelligent Release Control, and most prominent limiters these days will have some form of auto release mode. So if we take a look inside the Ableton Live limiter, we can see auto. And what that does is the limiter is going to adjust the release or the speed dynamically depending on the program material. So sometimes the release is going to be shorter, sometimes the release is going to be longer, and it's making that judgment call for you. And that's in the past what these IRC modes inside of Ozone have done. And the aim of these IRC modes is to prevent pumping. So the limiter triggering and then the audio springing back in a really audible way such that you get artifacts or distortion. Let's just take a listen to an example of what I mean by this. I have a track loaded up here. This is one of my originals off my last EP. It's called Silverlight. And I did the master myself. I used Ozone 5 for the master and I used the IRC3 mode. So I have Ozone 7's maximizer loaded up and all of the settings are identical to how I had it in my master. So let's just preview and listen to what it sounds like. I'll get rid of this Ableton limiter there. And I have Ozone 5 open just so you can see it, but I've disabled the maximizer. So I'm using these other modules inside of Ozone, Equalizer, Dynamics, and stuff like that. And I'm just replacing that with the Ozone 7 limiter so I can demo back and forth between these algorithms. So let's have a listen to the tune. <laughs> So if you look at the gain reduction trace up here, you can see that it's primarily being triggered by the kick drum and a little bit by the snare, sometimes by the bass. But it's mainly the kick drum that's driving the limiter. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and drop the threshold to something obscene. Now, I would never, ever do this on an actual master, so I'm just going to temporarily squash the hell out of this track for demonstration purposes only. Do not do this at home. Do not do this with your own music. And what we're going to be listening for is the release characteristic every time the kick drum hits what happens right after that and listening to the artifacts that pop into the master. So check this out. <laughs> So what we can hear there is every time the kick comes in, it squashes the track down. And not only is it reducing the kick, but it reduces the entire track because this is a single band limiter. It only has one thing it can do, and that's reduce the gain on the entire stereo track. So every time that kick drum is hitting, it's bringing down the gain on the entire track, which gives this huge ducking effect. And then you get all of these release characteristics of the limiter springing back and pumping and you get distortion and it sounds really crushed and really muddy and really terrible. But now let's listen to the IRC4 algorithm. Now, in this type of situation, any limiter should sound completely unusable. This is a massive abuse of the threshold on a limiter. So anyone in their right mind would expect this to sound absolute trash. So let's see what it actually sounds like. Shocking. It still doesn't sound anywhere near as clean as I would want in a master, but it doesn't sound anywhere near as abused as IRC2. Let's go back and forth between them now. Let's listen to the original. <laughs> The difference that makes is absolutely stunning. Now, what is this sorcery? What have they done? What is under the hood of this new beast and makes it tick? So let's go into that. What Isotope's done with the IRC4 is moved from a single band model from the previous modes to a multi-band mode. 
Now, not only have they done multi-band, but they have dozens of bands that are chosen using psychoacoustic principles. So they've taken this limiter and they've put it on steroids and built some voodoo, artificially intelligent magic into it. Now, there are other multi-band devices out there. Let's go take a look at one of Ozone's other modules, the multi-band dynamics. And how a typical multi-band plugin will work is you're going to have a few bands, and then you have these crossover points that you set manually. Now, this is the next level beyond that. Inside of the IRC4, you have not four, not ten, you have dozens of bands, and Ozone is setting the crossover points. It's choosing those intelligently for you. You have no control over this as a user. Ozone is optimizing those using its own algorithms. So when you're in IRC4, you have all these different bands. What do these bands do for you? Let's take an example of a situation that popped up in my track. The kick drum is really loud in the mix. And every time the kick drum is hitting, it's causing the limiter, which is a single band in IRC3, to duck the entire track. And you really hear that. The IRC4 algorithm handles that very differently. So what it'll do is it'll take a look at the bands in which the kick lies and say, okay, these are exceeding the threshold by a lot. We're going to attenuate those, but we're going to leave the other bands untouched. So higher up in the frequency spectrum, we have things like the vocal stab, we have synth leads, we have other percussion. Normally those would be ducked and you'd really hear that and hear the pumping of those as they came back into the mix when the release came off the limiter. In IRC4, that doesn't happen because each band is controlled separately. So that's a really brilliant thing. And that interplay that you get between louder and quieter elements is called intermodulation. So what this does is it now prevents really loud elements in the mix from damaging the fidelity of quieter, more delicate elements in your mix every time they trigger the limiter threshold. So it results in a far, far cleaner sounding limiter. Let's take a look at another example. I'm going to take the limiter and I'm going to return the threshold to where it originally was in my master, which is negative 7.5. We're going to toss it back into IRC3 mode. And I'm going to take the drums in my track and I'm going to boost up the kick drum by a massive amount. We're going to take the kick drum, we're going to boost that up by 5, 6, maybe even 7 dB. Okay, an obscene amount of increase in gain on the kick drum. Now let's go back to the limiter and see how IRC3 responds to that fat, huge kick drum punching through now. So predictably, as you can see in the gain reduction trace, we're getting a lot of gain reduction over all of the bands from the single band IRC3 limiter. Now let's flip into the IRC4 mode and see how all of those additional bands help the limiter out. So if you look up top at the gain reduction trace there, you'll see there isn't anywhere near as much overall gain reduction. And to me, the mix sounds a lot more full still. With IRC3, every time the kick hit, all you could hear was the kick and everything else kind of disappeared around it. Whereas with IRC4, the rest of the mix actually stays nice and full, even though the kick is still mixed too loud. So it preserves the fidelity of all the other stuff in the mix. Now let's flip back and forth between them so I can just A-B these for you quickly. So to wrap up, I see some really distinct upsides to this new algorithm. First of all, it really cleans up the limiter. There's way less artifacts, less pumping, and it's just way more transparent. It's, it's cleaner sounding in general, and that's great for the fidelity of masters. I really like that. The other thing is if you're a mastering engineer and you're doing this as a professional and you're working on clients' work, 
A lot of times you might get sent a mix and there's just something about it, an element that's too loud in the mix, and you have to send it back to them to get the mix redone. With this limiter algorithm, you could actually work on a mix, even if that is the case, because it's intelligently going to recognize that element that's popping out, and it's going to compensate for that. Now, with great power also comes great responsibility, and this is a double-edged sword in that if you're doing your mixes and you're doing your own masters, this could actually compensate for a bad sloppy mix, and I'm never a fan of that. So if you're doing your mix downs, always make sure that you're balancing your elements before getting to mastering, and you're not relying on this limiter to do the work for you, even though it could. It's just a sloppy practice. So the moral of this story is don't be sloppy, don't use plugins to compensate for a rushed or hurried process. Do your mix downs right, and then this limiter will sound even better at the end of the day. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys got a lot out of this video. Please like the vid and subscribe to our channel so you can stay fresh on all of our new updates. And I also wanted to give you the heads up that this video is part of a playlist where we're covering a whole bunch of the new features in Ozone. So make sure you check out the other videos in the playlist so you can see everything we got going on with Ozone 7. It's a fantastic plugin and the new IRC4 mode is my go-to mode for all of my masters. I'll talk to you guys real soon. Thanks so much. Take care.